Well, after a successful maiden with my Elf Ben Buckle vintage design, I couldn't resist making a start on this SE5A, which is part of the Scout series that I've kit which I picked up a while ago and I've been sitting on for some time. It's a very convenient size, 53 inch wingspan, which will be powered by a four stroke engine, 48 capacity OS. Um, and that will mean that because of the size, it can be fully rigged and put in the car and taken to the field like that. So I couldn't wait any longer and I've made a start. And that's where we're up to. Um, there's a few things that you don't get with the kit. One of them uh, are the guns. Now I've fabricated these using scrap material um, from uh, the bits and pieces box, including plastic, balsa, little bits of wire. There's the Lewis gun. And because you only see the barrel, it protrudes through the fuselage. This is the Vickers gun. Um, and there's Albert. He comes as a vacuum formed two parts, two halves that you, you put them together. And then I've painted them up. He'll have a little bit of touching up before you go as in the cockpit, no doubt. And then there's the beginning of the fuselage. Now it's a very strange approach, to me anyway. I would normally have thought of making a fuselage one side at a time, all the way back to the tail, including the laundrons. But Flair suggests that the way you approach this is that you make a box using the form as supplied and the sides. And I suppose the logic in that is that you end up with a very square, rigid frame on which to add the tail part of the model. And who am I to argue with Flair? This is a successful design that's been going for years. So I've stuck with it. I've put this together this morning actually uh, and in a short amount of time uh, it's gone together really well. There was no major fiddling, a um, little bit of sanding to clean up uh, the parts. It's old design because these are, it's not laser cut, these are press cut out and I was surprised that they popped out with very little persuasion with the model knife um, which was a good sign. But it went together really well and I've checked it for squareness and it's it remains very square. It will be powered by this lovely engine, OS4 stroke 48. Um, I will need to get an adapter for it so that I can actually put the exhaust directly through the bottom of the fuselage. And that way there'll be no unsightly exhaust sticking out, uh, spoiling the lines of the model as it flies past. The wings, <coughs> very straightforward. As you can see here, they're on a sort of clear parchment paper. And the reason for that is that they only provide um, a plan for one half of the wing. And obviously all you have to do is flip it over to build the other, the other wing. So in this case, it's the starboard panel for the upper wing. You flick it over and you get the port panel. You'll notice that I've added on the position of some riblets because I feel that once covered if you can't see them it'll spoil the scale look of the model. Of course it isn't an exact scale replica but I do want to add a few little touches to it uh, to improve the look. For example they provide you with quite a substantial actually um, back formed uh, nose area, radiate area which you add the radiator grills which are included, but they're very, very standoffish. And I think uh, I can do a little bit better than that. So I'll probably be scratch building uh, that part of it. It probably need nose weight, so anything I add on the front, it's not a problem. So I'll keep everybody informed. I'll let you know how I get on. Um, winter months approaching, it's a time to get some building done. So I hope everybody, if you can get flying, you get flying. If you can't, get building. Speak to you soon.